But let's move on to CM Punk, who was on the MMA Hour today with Ariel Hawani. And uh, it was the MMA Hours with CM Punk because he was on for close to two hours uh, talking about pretty much everything you would want to have covered involving CM Punk. He talked Mm -hmm. about Vince McMahon. I would state that of the current WWE talent, he was the most outspoken about Vince McMahon. He did not mince words. He has written this guy off like he should be gone. It's deplorable what's listed in this lawsuit. Said that he didn't even go through the entire lawsuit. The text messages were damning enough that this guy um, needs to be gone. And, um, you know, did did not talk about um, other aspects of the lawsuit as well. I mean, WWE are listed as defendants in the case. I mean, didn't really talk much about John Laurinaitis. It was focused on Vince, but he was... It definitely didn't um, didn't bite his tongue on on any of it, and in fact stated that um, some people don't want to talk about it. He's the opposite. He thinks like that. You know, there's victims out there, and this this should be uh, discussed as well. I would say like the the three key parts of the interview. There was the aspect of Vince McMahon. There was the return to WWE last November, and then a lion's share focused on. AEW and confirming the NDA after Brawl Out. And he was very tight lipped and could not talk about anything regarding All Out. But when it came to specifically the fight itself, yeah, yeah. he talked about the press conference. He talked yeah. about what led up to that. The fact mm. that nothing I said there was anything Tony Khan had not heard before. Mm. And it was everything involving the brawl, right down to mentioning Larry. He can't talk about any of that. Doesn't know if he'll ever be able to talk about that. But the NDA was not something he's how did he word it? It was nothing I had to sign for something I did wrong. Something to that effect. I think it was at least a little bit maybe um confusing. Just you know, we can't definitively say one way or another. Um, but he he did sign an NDA. I think the to me the I read it as if he said he he didn't make anybody sign an NDA for anything he did wrong, whatever you want to read into it. But he, he, he didn't seem in favor of the NDA. Let's just say like it, 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 it basically, he said it wasn't his idea. It was Tony's. Yeah. And there was no NDA attached to the Jack Perry story. And he pretty much gave a blow by blow account of what went down with Jack Perry. And I mean, dude, like punk was just like, he was very comfortable about going into great detail and talking about everything here. And that's that's how the interview went. I mean, Punk is a great talker. And, he- and I mean, that's that's CM Punk. This this felt very much like the CM Punk that um, famously um, was on the Art of Wrestling podcast and spilling, you know, telling a, a friend at this point, you know, um, what happened from his perspective. I think he wanted to get all of this stuff out in a, in a public way. And he had to have known this was the interview that it was going to all come out in, I guess. So it's out. So you can say that, but he also seemed to give a real attitude of like, he'd rather not talk about this. You know, he he's, he's given. Oh yeah. I really got that vibe from two hours here that he doesn't really want to talk about this, but while we're at it, let's, let's pull up my coffee and pretty much give you the blow by blow. I think he was more than happy to talk about it and get it out. I mean, you can definitely be skeptical. Like if you're going to be doing an interview with somebody like Aero Hawani, you you know, you're going to be asked these questions. So I, I have to imagine he was mentally preparing himself for, for answering for a lot of this, but he also seemed to try to give the vibe that, um, the wrestling industry has given away too much behind the scenes and it's come to hurt the wrestling industry overall. Um, has it, I can tell you it's, um, it's made several people a lot more interested. I mean, look, you know, survivor series is is, is, it, 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 1997 resulted in, I think, um, uh, the attitude era for, and and the Mr. McMahon character. So in many ways, the health of the industry, it's wonderful. How's the health of um interest in CM Punk? I mean, it's wonderful. So I mean, he did say that. He said like he 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 can make money off of a lot of a lot of this stuff. He and I guess like seemed to give the impression that he'd rather not completely spell it out for everybody. It is sort of like the the the, the how I I read it. Um but anyway, what what was what were we on at this point? Well, let's let's kind of go in order and cover the sure. a- AEW stuff at, at first and um So, I mean, going backwards, he goes into further detail about the Hangman Page promo and from Punk's side was that they sat down, they went over the promo, the workers' rights promo, we will call it, and 
again, Punk stating when they got out there, Hangman had a completely different promo. He didn't go through any of the stuff that they had discussed in the back and blindsided him. Blindsided him. That felt he was double crossed on television. Mm -hmm. And again, Punk stated like basically who is this guy to jeopardize this, this house that we, this million dollar gate that we have that they had coming up at double or nothing. And Spoke with him in the back about he was not going to say Colt Cabana's name in this, but I think everyone could put Mm -hmm. two and two together that they sat down and he understood you standing up for a friend, but doing it on public on on national television is totally unjustifiable Mm -hmm. and couldn't trust this guy. Now, it was not brought up um, punk using television time himself to then call out hangman page and challenge him to i guess a legit fight on television and hangman looking like a fool because he was Mm. not going to be answering this shoot challenge that punk was uh laying out on on television so that to me was the point where things had gone off the rails at that point and i thought that was sort of the cm punk aew run you mean i think so i think Mm. at that point okay you are now like And listen, if you want to criticize Hangman Page, fair game. If you want to criticize CM Punk for his retaliation, I think fair game. It never should have gotten past that point because we are now using television for retribution and we are using it for our selfish reasons and we're not doing any business on television. Mm -hmm. And Punk reiterated the fact of how much, how valuable television time is and we're using it to play our own political games with one another. But things progress, things continue, and then we have the all the stuff that happens with the scrum, the fallout from that. And Punk's belief was that he thought he was done after All Out. And you could see that he was, um, you know, he he just reiterated the fact that it was nothing that Tony Khan had not heard before from him. And, I mean, this was as definitive as Punk has been regarding his criticism of Tony Khan, stating that, uh, b- both dismissive of AEW, which he certainly was in the press conference. I think everyone took that as one of the main takeaways was that this was a guy that did not see AEW's successes up to that point as providing it any kind of validation that they were this upstart that, you know, he did not see these guys as having achieved anything basically was one of the sentiments you got from that press conference. And I would only double down on that conclusion listening to his thoughts with with Ariel here of the fact that he was critical of AEW as a business that, I mean, kind of just leaning into the stereotype of AEW as this billionaire son's playground to put on fantasy matches and not nothing about making money or selling tickets. Uh, Specifically, he called out um, maybe catering to an audience that prefers just you know, so one one of the I don't want to misquote him. You know, everybody listened to the interview. It's 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 a very important interview, and and, and it was tremendously conducted by Ariel Hawani. Um, but you know, he he said something to the effect of like he has a different metric for like how he decides what um I don't know what good wrestling product is or what a healthy uh, wrestling something to that effect. And he said, um, if your idea of a good wrestling promotion or a healthy or a successful business is um, the number of five star matches you put out and not, you know, um, the amount of money you make or the amount of people that you draw through, through the gate, then they're in the wrong business. And, and that was kind of his assessment of what AEW was, at least in part, you know, a company that perhaps focuses on um, something like, you know, five star matches rather than making money. Or, yeah. or drawing attendance or drawing ratings. And I'm not even trying to play devil's advocate with him, but I would also argue like Punk's mentality is very much rooted in those he came up watching and the industry he came up learning, which was cutting promos to sell tickets and to draw people to the arena or in later years to spend $30 on a pay-per-view. That's not the business either today. Like that yeah. is oh. a... That is a industry that has passed us by. This Mm -hmm. is about producing television content and producing as much television content as we can get paid for. And that is the game. That is the reason the industry is making record revenue. And it's ultimately going to be Tony Khan's failure or success 
once this next television negotiation goes down. We mm -hmm. can't give a passing or failing grade until that deal is completed. And if they get the increase that they want and they're into profitability, then all of these arguments that people have made against Tony Khan's style of booking or he can't produce wrestling at this level, all that goes out the window. But yeah. what we do have are meaningful metrics of where AEW is now. And this is by far the strongest competitor that WWE has had since 1999. And mm -hmm. the fact is that, I mean, this is a company that what they did at Wembley Stadium, what they have been able to do. I mean, this is to me not a company that is just, you know, existing with several thousand internet fans that are tuning in. I think like there is a evolutionary process too when it comes to the talent that are in that locker room and ones that see different as bad as opposed to different being what the alternative is attempting to do. And it's, and I think Punk was on board at some point of this being that alternative, but I think you really got the sense that he, he saw this company as something that was not in line with what he believed the business is. I don't think he ever fully defined like what exactly it is about AEW that um, gives him the impression that it's not a, what did he say? A real business or, or something to that effect. Like he said something like, you know, basically like, I think what he, he said, these guys don't want me here. This isn't a real business. This yeah. isn't a business predicated on making money, drawing money, selling tickets, doing business. It's not what it was sold to me as. Okay. So thank you for the quote. And I, I mean, so does that suggest to you, it, I mean, it goes beyond, you know, this is a company that's focused on five-star matches. Like it seems like a lot of what he was trying to say was that this is some sort, sort of boys club amongst, you know, the people that were like the elite essentially like is what I think he was trying to get at without exactly specif specifying those. Words. At one point he was asked point blank, who doesn't <laughs> want you there? The elite. And he said, yes. Right. Right. Um, I, does that mean I'm sure if you ask the elite, they would have their reasons related to business, why they felt CM Punk was detrimental to be in their locker room. It, it, this can go on for a long time and I'm grateful that we got this from CM Punk because it's the most clear um, document we have of how he feels about this entire thing. Will we ever get the other side? I don't know. I, I, I really don't know. Um, I mean, uh, it, it will depend on, on who is like allowed to speak about incidents. I mean, from our knowledge, like there's nothing that prevents Jack Perry uh, from speaking and he comes off very poorly on from punk side in mm -hmm. terms of uh, like that aspect of things. Something I didn't realize was I thought the glass incident was referring to him punching the glass with like his bare hands, but they, they um, punk here said it was, he wanted to smash it with a rod of some sort, like a pipe. Yeah. Um, the story was that they were going to do an angle with a rental car and use glass. And Tony Schiavone came to CM punk stating Jack Perry is cussing me out. He's also cussing out Mike Mansouri and several others. And they were asking Punk for his assistance here that they don't want Jack Perry doing this stunt. And Punk came over and stated that not on my show. You can go to Wednesday and do that. And he said that when he approached Jack Perry, Jack Perry was cool about this and didn't raise his voice or... Um, there was no like arguing over this. And then this, I guess, was the was the receipt on the all in pre show with the real glass line, which I, I thought, listen, it's you could argue that CM Punk was probably at the end of his patience level by the time that the Jack Perry incident happens. That mm -hmm. said, I don't defend Jack. Perry. I, like, I thought that was like a completely ludicrous thing for him to again utilizing television time not for the job at hand but rather settling your own personal issues on television where we are not going in this direction a fraction of your audience has any clue what you're even talking about um and mm. it ultimately it ended up being the absolute worst case scenario because yeah um straw that broke the camel's back that was so it to speak. i mean at the time, I remember thinking, oh, okay, like he's just taking advantage of some online buzz to to make some reference because he's playing a heel, assuming that he had cleared the line beforehand with CM Punk. Totally different. N knowing how tense <laughs> that situation is, 
I t- completely agree he's the last person you want to target. But I, I'll, I'll also say, like, it really feels to me, like, knowing now kind of what we know about Jack Perry, he, this guy seemed like he was really on edge, you know, over a, a period of time for for whatever reason. And and how do we know what he's kind of been going through, you know, when he was told uh, about, you know, not being able to use glass or, or whatever, you know? Well, um, Jack Perry got to the back and... He explained that he uh, punk went up to him and this is when they had words and Jack Perry basically said, do something about it. And punk did. He said, I never struck him. I choked him a little bit. Right. I just choked somebody a little bit and he, I guess, put him in a choke. Samoa Joe told him to stop. So he did. And then he told Tony Khan, he quits. He said, I turned to Tony and said, this place is a fucking joke. You're a clown. I quit. Uh, He opted to go out, do the match with Samoa Joe because he wanted to do it. Um, He was advertised on the show. He did it for the agent, Jerry Lynn. He did it for the ref, Paul Turner. And he knew it was going to be his last match he would ever have with Samoa Joe. And completed his match, came to the back and said he was never kicked out of the building. uh, But security did say that they would be making their night easier if he just left. So Punk opted to leave and bought Nando's for several members uh, of the roster and said um, uh, the other uh, part here was that after Jack Perry made the line, Punk went to Tony Khan at the building and told him to handle it regarding what Perry said on air. And if not, um, then he won't like the way he handles it. And that's when he approached Jack Perry. Now, Mind you here, Tony Khan is producing the biggest show of his life. So I don't know what Punk was expecting Tony Khan to do in the moment of this pre-show match and to um, handle this. I can certainly state that there were there were missteps by Tony Khan along the way. Um, this and entire the, again, thing, not just not just all in, but this the entire thing. Yeah. And I hope that he takes solace in the fact of where leadership failed in the, in this and mm. how these combustible elements all got to a fever pitch they n- hopefully never should have mm. and listen this is a difficult situation where you're dealing a lot of big personalities and egos and tony khan was trying to keep everyone under one roof and it became untenable um it, so he was trying to keep them there without necessarily doing the work in manage it, it sounds like at least from punk's perspective without doing the work in making sure that the the chemistry between all the participants um was there so that they could even coexist from punk's perspective after all in um sorry all out the press conference um he says nobody contacted him from the company he didn't have any communication even with tony for several months he he stated that um he he stated that after the all out press conference in 2022, yeah, that he he didn't hear from anyone for six months. He mentioned he had to pay for his surgery, um, which sounds nuts. If that's did accurate. he say he had to pay for it or that he had to like do his own research? He said he had to pay for the surgery. Now, unless huh. that was like a just his words were jumbled. I I can't fathom that one. Um, sure. But that he had to book his his physical therapy and. Um, which is in stark contrast to his current um, uh, injury where he says the WWE has been basically handling and kind of guiding him through the entire process. And he suggests he says he feels he might be what if the recovery time might be like half that uh, of what it was the last time. Yes. Yeah. Um, and I mean, and he kind of had the same feeling that I think most people had of the idea of putting him on a separate show and the elite on another show and Never would they mix. Just figured this is not going to work. It did mm-hmm. not work. Um, they yeah. didn't get into you know specifics like you know the situation involving Christopher Daniels. You know your talent relations rep that could not attend Collision. Um, it was just like that was the ultimate band aid of trying yeah. to keep all these parties happy. And it's remarkable that they got like two months out of this. And continues to be remarkable to me the fact that like even proceeding with something like that idea, much less something like all in where everybody had to share the same space with each other, um, that they didn't have everybody sit together in a group just to kind of at least talk all this stuff out. Now, from what we know, Punk has been open to the idea, but the other side is not. Um, Now, if Tony Khan wanted all these people to sit down and talk together, I feel like he could have had that happen. So ultimately, is it a Tony Khan 
thing that you have to place blame on? I I think the buck stops with Tony Khan. Like that is ultimately the person that is making these decisions and the wins mm-hmm. go to Tony Khan, the losses go to Tony Khan. I think yeah. in a in a talent relations situation such as this one. Um, mm-hmm. you know, I, I can understand like both sides here. I can understand Punk stating, let's just sit down. This doesn't have to be as big a deal as it's been made out to be, but it is a big deal. And from the elite side of that, just like we're not working w- w- with the, with this guy after he just uh goes through with that press conference and just totally dismisses like that was it was more than just like a shot at Colt Cabana, a shot at Hangman Page. It really was the entire company that he just ran down. And I honestly, like I watched that press conference and just thought like, this guy is just not somebody that is, he just does not see the merits of this company. That's what it felt like in that, in that setting. This to me now, like really feels like the words of somebody who was already cheated, you know, like what maybe to me, the context of the hangman workers rights promo and the fact that punk felt like he was double cross going onto TV, knowing how short of a few CM Punk can have and how much of a fucking grudge he can hold against anybody who wrongs him. The all out press conference makes a bit more sense to me, not justifying it. It's completely the wrong way to go about handling your differences with a colleague. Um, But I can at least understand that that sort of like fury, you know, a little bit more just from what I know of him. He said he felt the elite didn't want him there from the beginning. Um, Shut down any possibility of ever um, bearing the hatchet with Colt Cabana stated that prior to the all out scrum, Cabana had come up to him at an independent show stating, can we go talk? And Punk said, I will never speak to you unless a lawyer is present. So that is about as concrete of a status update as you're going to get. And and then the the, the WWE stuff, which was covered at the beginning, it so he has let go the first week of September. And they talked oh, about that. Had a lot talking. Uh, spoke a lot about the the visit he had. While he was still under AW. That's Contract right. Well. That's right. So this was in April of last year mm-hmm. when he went to the Raw in Chicago and it confirmed. May. Maybe May. I think it was April. Oh, I'm okay. Because they said May, but you're okay. They did I trust say you. May I trust interview. you more than. I'm pretty sure it was April. His own memory. Last yeah. year, uh, when he went to the Raw in Chicago, he stated that he was asked to leave the building. Um, did not buy Nando's on this request to leave the building um, and said it was a Vince McMahon call. He didn't know Vince McMahon was physically there at the building or working remotely, but it was a Vince McMahon call for him to leave. The The circumstances that led him even backstage in the first place was because he was doing the CFC uh, commentary and happened to be on the same flight back as several WWE stars talked about almost kind of making friends with like Liv Morgan on the flight and through Liv Morgan, um, Bailey texted him, you know, because Liv Morgan uh, was telling Bailey, I feel like this is such a, <laughs> why am I even watching the interview? Anyway, so he was, he's saying he was going to attend as a guest of Bailey's just to visit a friend. Yes. And his argument was AEW talent have appeared on WWE programming uh, in the past. What's the big deal about me meeting with friends? Uh, referring to what, Burt Baker? No, I, I think he was. I think he was bringing up, you know, when they had Chris Jericho do Austin's podcast or when they they allowed some of the guys to do the John Cena appreciation night. I mean, that was all stuff with the company. Um, okay. And he said that AEW, people at AEW were very upset and the word betrayed uh, was used uh, to him. So already you're just getting the sense that this attempt to bring him in house on collision. You remember when they were going to have the upfronts. Um, and they mm-hmm. never announced Punk with Collision, and that was almost a, a delayed announcement uh, before he was on the first show in Chicago. And and then uh, things fall apart where he's let go. He said he he is he did not talk to Tony Khan again after the Wembley Stadium show. There was no contact that week. He was fired and thought that it w- he doesn't believe that he did anything to put Tony Khan's life in jeopardy. But he can't get into his head and. What was his exact comment about Tony Khan? He says, um, he's not a boss. He's a nice guy. And ultimately, I think that's a detriment to the company. That was his summary of Tony Khan. Mm, right. And and then really, it's Nick Khan who is positioned as the, the guy that is 
the most in contact with with Punk. Um, Punk was with CAA when Khan was there, and sounds like they even had some kind of handshake agreement before he went to AEW that he didn't get into details about why that never materialized. But even before it does, backstage, it right. does tell you like Punk's. And I mean, this was not a secret at the time that you know Punk was definitely more open to going back to WWE, going back years, and not something that just materialized in the last mm. six months in terms of his uh, that hurdle to clear to come back to WWE. But he gets uh, he's in some contact, and then it's on the Monday before Survivor Series that Nick Khan calls him, and they're talking that week. He gets on a FaceTime with Paul Levesque on the Thursday, which is Thanksgiving in the U.S., and they. Apparently, it's water under the bridge about all their past issues hmm. and shows up at the arena on Saturday, signs his contract and walks out. And that is the return. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, interesting saga. Uh, I think uh, also interesting that um, he had no non-compete, you know, which Nick, Nick Khan wishes he realized before uh, that phone call with CM Punk. Because... That's right, because the call was about coming back at the Rumble. Mm -hmm. And then Punk noted the fact that you know, you guys, have he could have come back the Chicago. next, he could have come back the next day after his termination. It sounds like he could have been there instantly. Like Chicago was the show to do mm. it at, uh, it, mm. at survivor series. I mean, they handled it really, really well, but yeah, there was no, no compete. He was free to go, um, immediately. Um, so there, there you go. I, there's sort of, certainly many, many different, um, takeaways you can have from it. I think the most of all is that I believe he was being, um, you know, th this is his side of things. I'm certain that there will be um, other perspectives, other counter uh, perspectives that may come out of this. I don't know if we'll ever hear like a hangman page may as well have like sewn his lips when it comes to CM Punk, because this guy has not broached any of this stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, Jack Perry, maybe um, we'll have a time that, that he will give his end of things. But um, you certainly got a, a a large insight into CM Punk. Yeah, you did. And now you have some of this information and uh, go wild internet, you know, make up your own minds and, and debate amongst yourselves, I suppose. You know, when, just when you thought this story died, I mean, this just completely reinvigorates things. And I think, um, you know, the, the 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 sort of philosophy we've seen at least through um, the Bucks and P P Page and the Elite is to not directly speak about it. Um there's speculation that like stories could be fed through sources. We don't know. Punk was also very critical of the of the wrestling media on this uh, particular call uh, uh, interview as well. Um, but I, I I just I don't really know if if anybody's minds are going to be made one way or another. Um, I'll say like this is the most clear information we have from a certain side. So I think it's very easy to see this as the definitive truth but it's it's also something we should keep in mind this is one side of the story I'd and um, certainly take that into account yeah yeah so will we ever know you know the the sort of uh, factual information of it all i mean i i hope so but maybe not for uh, not 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 this week at least